Hi, my name is Yoka and I work for Tony Shokalonely. I wanted to say thank you for choosing to pick my live stream to attend. I know you have a lot of choices over the next five days. Um, I'm hoping to connect with a bunch of you, um, especially the retailers or anyone who is working in um, chocolate about the fact that we can really transform this supply chain together. So I work for a company called Tony Chocolonely. You might recognize the chocolate or you might not. Uh, we're growing. We're the uh, smallest, we're the biggest small chocolate company <laughs> in the world. Um, there are a lot of very large companies that control most of the world's chocolate. We are trying to change that. There's a systemic inequality um, that results from this power dynamic that we are trying to address. So our tagline is that we are crazy about chocolate, but even more serious about people. So it's very enjoyable to eat chocolate. It's a luxury product, um, but the people who are growing cocoa are having a rougher go of it. Um, and it's actually a, cocoa is very easy to um, isolate as an issue because most of the world's cocoa comes from West Africa and more specifically two countries within West Africa, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. These two countries together produce 60% of the cocoa beans that the entire world consumes. Um, that's pretty specific geography. Um, and who is growing that chocolate? It's not large plantations like you'll see in uh, tea or bananas. Um, in cocoa, it is uh, overwhelmingly smallholder farmers. Uh, two and a half million smallholder uh, cocoa growing families specifically. Now, here is the shocking bit. Um, these smallholder farmers are struggling to make a living, um, to take care of their environment, to take care of their people. Um, one of the, the, the reasons why Tony Shogolomi even started as a company is this shocking fact that child labor is still extremely common in cocoa. Just a year and a half ago, the NORC report published that there are still currently 1.56 million children who are in child labor in West Africa today. 95% of those children are doing work that is hazardous to their health and not letting them uh, attend school or go to school as much as they would need to. They are using machetes, they are possibly spraying pesticides, they are carrying heavy loads, and in general doing things that we as a world um, have agreed that children should not have to do. There is a big difference between child labor and child work. These are farming families. It's normal for a child to help on a chocolate, uh, on a cocoa farm. Uh, but here we're talking about truly the type of labor that stunts a child's growth um, and that um, that is technically illegal or that is illegal. On top of that, uh, it's not just children who are um, in illegal labor in cocoa. There are also about 30,000 cases of modern slavery in cocoa, according to the latest research. So that is people, adults who are being held against their will um, to grow on cocoa farms. And you'll have seen some um, some lawsuits about this in the US against the big chocolate companies, um, but this is still happening. And it's really mind blowing that this is still, um, uh, still an issue in chocolate, especially since chocolate is a luxury product. It's something you eat to make you feel good. Um, and it should be something that's putting positivity out into the world. Now, why is this happening? It's not that um, small families want their children to be in child labor. Um, it's really a systemic issue. I think traditionally in sustainability, we've looked a lot at farmers themselves, good agricultural practices, good labor conditions. Those are certainly all true. But why would a farmer not be able to implement those? Well, because they are not being given the tools or frankly, the finances in order to do that. So the responsibility for good labor and good environmental stewardship are really also in the consuming countries. Cocoa is um, interesting in that you have billions of chocolate consumers on one side of the occasion and millions of smallholder cocoa uh, farmers on the other side of the supply chain. And in the middle are just a select few chocolate companies that control 95% of the world's cocoa. So about five companies are that hourglass pinch in the middle, representing billions of consumers and millions of smallholders. That means that there isn't a lot of transparency or a lot of power on either side of the uh, 
of the tipped over uh, hourglass. The, the power is in the middle. <coughs> so it's not true that in the cocoa supply chain, the world is equally divided, which is how you see a traditional chocolate bar in nice, even square blocks that your children don't fight over when you break it into pieces. Tony's, as always, is trying to do things a little bit different. And so we have our chocolate bar unequally divided. Um, looking for a chocolate bar here. The inside of our uh, chocolate bar, if you break it open, um, it is into sort of frustrating to break unequal pieces. But we are trying to speak to the truth that the chocolate industry is unequally divided, is unfair, is fundamentally unfair. We even have a little bit of an Easter egg in our chocolate bar in the sense that you can see there the map of West Africa actually reflected in our chocolate bar. Again, this is because everything we do is to try to create consumer awareness around the fact that um, there is a problem in chocolate. We are tiny. We are not one of those big five comp uh, companies in the middle. But one of the quotes we do to motivate ourselves is that we say, if you think you're too small to have an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room by Anita Roddick from The Body Shop. We are that mosquito and we are getting louder and louder. So we have been talking about this for a long time, but to, to summarize the introduction, uh, the cocoa supply chain remains one of the most challenging in the world one of the most difficult. at the at the core of it is the fact that poverty is widespread as a world we have decided we have agreed that a human that humans have the right to earn a living income they have the right to earn enough money to take care of their families um, do some savings go to school um, that is the whole eradicating poverty thing that we're doing under the United Nations. Um, the truth is that a majority of cocoa farmers are not able to earn a living income, and they're living on less than 78 cents per day. The World Bank of Poverty line is around $1.60, $1.70 a day, and that's not even a living income. So you can see that the gap there is enormous. And the result of that poverty is that children are in child labor, as I previously said. Uh, another result of it is that um, smallholder farmers are encroaching into more and more productive land. Um, and so deforestation is also a result of this uh, this poverty. So how can we turn that ship around? We have an idea. This is our roadmap at Tony Sugar Lonely, uh, our three pillars that we are trying to do. So the first, like I said, is we're creating awareness. We're talking to consumers in every way that we can, uh, that they have the power to make a choice to a more um, fair uh, world of chocolate. So it should be shocking to know that in your common chocolate brands, um, child labor is extremely common. Tony Shook Lonely also tries to lead by example. So we want to be a delicious chocolate that consumers love to buy, but that, that is doing the right thing, that is paying farmers more for cocoa, uh, that is being transparent and traceable. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. And the third thing we're trying to do is inspire to act. Uh, we are trying to inspire others to act. And that's what I'm hoping to do here with you today. My Tony's title is actually Inspire to Actress. Um, and this is because we know that even if we make everything perfect for Tony Sugar Lonely Chocolate, um, which nothing is ever perfect and we're working on it, but even if we did it just for our company, we are making a drop in the bucket of the sea of cocoa that is out there. We know that we can only do this if we do this together with others. We want to collaborate with competing chocolate companies um, to change the inequity in cocoa. So introducing Tony's Open Chain. It's an initiative we started about three years ago. It is essentially our invitation to other chocolate companies to join us uh, to make impact together. Uh, there's no need to reinvent a wheel or for everybody to do their own pilot projects. This is something that if we make this decision to do it together, we can make an enormous change. So the basis of Tony's Open Chain is our five sourcing principles, and I will talk to you briefly about that. But the result of Tony's Open Chain is really a collection of brands, uh, including uh, A labels or private labels of our retail partners. Um, to change the way we buy cocoa and fundamentally change the dynamics in cocoa. Um, these other brands that join us, we call them mission allies. And we know that we're gaining momentum as we grow. 
This year, we're doing about collectively across the nine brands that are with us, we're doing about 15,000 metric tons of cocoa beans. Our ambition is to multiply that by 10 in the next um, five or six years, which will put us at about 5% of West African cocoa trade, which really gives us a seat at the table with the larger uh, chocolate brands. So what is the, the core recipe to the, um, the fairer cocoa that we're putting onto the market? Again, none of this is revolutionary, except that the key thing here is that all of these things are done completely and together. So it's a, it's a five, uh, five ingredients list uh, recipe. The first thing is traceable beans. Cocoa is an extremely anonymous uh, commodity. It flows through the, uh, the world, uh, it gets it gets crushed, it gets pressed, it goes into cocoa powder, it goes into cocoa mass, it goes into cocoa powder, sorry, butter. <clears throat> it is very difficult to keep traceable, but we think that that traceability is super key because without knowing where your chocolate is coming from, you can't really do anything about it. Um, so we work with uh, currently 11 um, cooperatives in West Africa. Uh, all of the farmers who deliver to those cooperatives are GPS mapped. They are in our digital traceability system. Um, so we have full bean to bar traceability. That means that we can also look for deforestation in the supply chain. It also means that we can do extremely thorough check. We don't do it. The cooperatives do it into child labor. So the co-ops that we're working with are checking 100% of households every year in order to find child labor and most importantly, not punish when you find it, but remediate it when you find it. So work together with the families to come up with solutions um, to get the child out of child labor. And that's stuff that we all fund. We Mission Allies fund that work and the co-ops do the work. We're a very co-op centric approach, which is also quite unusual in COCO. You'll see a lot of sustainability initiatives, but it's really trader led and we want to be co-op led because of the strong farmer um, sourcing principle there. So we work with democratically run strong cooperatives that can do a good job representing their smallholder farmers. We think that's really the solution and the way forward to work with 2.56 million smallholders at once. Super key is that we pay a higher price. Um, the price paid for cocoa is based on a world commodity price. The governments of Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire set it every year, uh, set the farm gate price based on the average price of the last 12 months. Um, and it is vastly inadequate to cover uh, what farmers need. So we have worked together with Fairtrade to come up with a model called the living income reference price. What is the price you pay per kilo of cocoa in order to enable a living income for a cocoa farmer? Um, so this is, we basically fill the gap. Uh, there's the farm gate price, some of the certification premiums, because everything is fair trade certified in our supply chain. And then we fill the gap to that price and enables a living income. And all of our mission allies help pay for that cocoa. We commit to the long term. So we work with cooperatives for five years at least uh, or more. Um, and that long-term traceable, transparent partnership is really where the magic starts to happen and real impact is happening. And of course, we have productivity and quality as part of our um, as part of our uh, approach. I think that any sustainability initiative does, um, except that we're not saying that farmers can higher yield farm themselves out of poverty. We're just saying they want that we want them to be um, healthier. Um, businesses um, well served by their cooperatives growing a, a new, an amount of cocoa that gets them towards a living income. So what we're doing at this point, three, four years, Tony's has been doing this since 2013 and we've been doing it together with other companies for the last three and a half years and we're really starting to see results. What we are doing is not just a pilot project, it's not a trial, um, it is uh, proving delivered results. And I'm going to show you a couple of those results at the end of this presentation. It's not a certification. It's a way of doing business. So we're built on certification. 100% of our the cocoa in our supply chain is fair trade certified. A bunch of it is Rainforest Alliance certified. Some of it is organic. Um, those are valuable programs that we work with, but we pull that responsibility towards us. And it's really a way of doing business and the interactions between the brands and the cooperatives. We're built for scale. Every day. We, we are small now, but growing really fast. Um, and our, our 
our approach is scalable. We can, and we've, we've proven that already because we've been growing the last two years, not because Tony's chocolate is growing in need, but our mission allies chocolate need is um, growing. There's an advantage to the fact that we're focused only on cocoa. It means that we're not getting distracted with issues in other um, commodities. We really are specialists in sustainable fair cocoa. We charge the right price. Um, we pay farmers, we collectively pay farmers the right price. Uh, we all put together in the pot to make this impact um, together, which means we can do that more efficiently at a wider scale. And I think really important for this audience, I know a lot of you are retailers and you have a lot of SKUs and a lot of commodities to worry about. Cocoa is very frequently one of the high risk ones, including palm oil, coffee, bananas. Those are all ones that are familiar to you, but cocoa is very much one of them. Um, and there's legislation coming down the pipeline in the US, in the UK, in the EU. Uh, you'll know the uh, corporate uh, sustainability due diligence legislation. You'll know the deforestation legislation. The five sourcing principles and Tony's open chain put you ahead of the curve on that, uh, both in terms of risk management and in terms of impact reporting. Uh, we, we, we believe that that's a, a real value that we bring to Mission Allies. So who's been saying yes to this? Who has been collaborating on Cocoa with Tony's Sugar Lonely? Tony's Sugar Lonely is basically also a mission ally in Tony's open chain. Um, you'll see we have some chocolate uh, milk products. We have some uh, A-label or private label brands from retailers like Aldi and Albertang, who might even be here today. Uh, we've got in the breakfast category, uh, we have private, more private, smaller boutique chocolate um, companies. And we even have an ice cream brand. Um, this year, Ben and Jerry said yes to joining Tony's Open Chain. So we are collaborating together to celebrate it. We made a little, um, we made bars imitating their pints and they made pints imitating our bars. That's a one year campaign, but really for the next five years, at least we're gonna be working together on paying farmers more for cocoa. Um, we're calling it a chocolate love affair because it's better um, to work together towards this goal of making chocolate 100% slave free, which is the mission of, uh, of Tony Sugar Lonely. So these are the brands that are saying yes. Uh, and now we are, I want to talk to you a little bit about what are the results that we've been seeing because it really is impressive. This is, um, this is stuff we're excited to talk about. When we're talking about income, uh, again, farmers are earning approximately 78 cents a day, wildly under the poverty line, and certainly also the living income line. Um, and we're seeing that the, in the co-ops where we've been working for a long time, uh, almost 40% of the farmers are earning at least a living income, and the average is close to that living income. So when you're talking about the gap, we're closing the gap. If we can get higher volumes of beans flowing through Tony's open chain, we can close that gap, that average gap completely, which is really, really exciting. Um, you won't see other sustainability programs that have achieved that in a short amount of time. Child labor rates are plummeting in the cooperatives that we've been working for a while. So when we onboard a new cooperative, which we do almost every year, one or two or three a year, depending on how much the demand is growing, You'll see that our child labor numbers skyrocket, which is logical. Um, we find prevalency rates of around 50%, which is industry average, and that makes sense. And we're happy to find those cases because if we weren't, then we're missing something. But three years onwards, what are we finding? We're finding that the rates are just plummeting. So we're seeing around a prevalent child labor prevalence rate of about 4% in the co-ops that we've been working with for a long time. That's very, very, very powerful. That shows to me that this is a problem that we can fix. We also have verified no illegal deforestation because 100% of the supply chain is mapped. Um, we are seeing that there is um, uh, no illegal deforestation. And we're looking at what we can do even more in terms of um, carbon uh, compensation and moving deeper into agroforestry. But this is going to be really important for um, companies that are trying to import chocolate into the EU when that legislation comes online. So we feel really, really proud about this. Um, this is a model that we wanna share with others. We wanna inspire others to join us. Uh, we also want to unburden you from having to figure out everything um, yourself. And um, if you are at all interested or it triggers you or you have another commodity that you're thinking about uh, where you just wanna talk about how to do this, then please do reach out to me. I'm easy to find, I'm the only Yoka which is a very Dutch name, at Tony Shukalongi. So here's my email address, and I hope to see you around at this event. Bye.
Thank you.